Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Quick Tip Extend Script tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna go over three simple to complex script examples that I've made in the real world to kind of show you the breadth of uh, what kind of jobs you can look for if you ever get extend script jobs making scripts or if you're uh, ever looking to hire someone, uh, what kind of things are possible. Of course, this isn't going to cover everything that's possible, but it will give you a general idea of what kind of automations, effects, and types of things that are actually possible to modify. So this first script we're gonna take a look at is one called Isometrics, which I made for a client and it never ended up getting released. But essentially what it does is it takes your footage and it has a simple UI and it has a very simple function. Uh, you can choose to make it isometric left, right, or top. So if you select one, it'll let you know it was added successfully. And essentially what it does is it applies some various transform effects to create this isometric effect. And then you can easily undo it and select a different isometric effect. This is usually used for certain types of 8-bit uh, art or other types of skew uh, art that are required. And it essentially just rotates it and makes it appear as if it's a side on a 3D object. This was a dockable script that was very simple to write and the functionality was pretty much just uh, developing some presets for the transform effects and then integrating those whenever you click on one of these buttons. So that's an example of a very simple effect. Let's move on to something of medium complexity, which uh, instead of this one taking about a week maximum to develop and finalize, this one, next one, took probably about three months to, to start to finish from it actually working as intended. So sometimes people have design templates that they want to sort of connect with the script, or their goal is to sort of have a script automatically generate it or use it and quickly adjust the settings within it. So in this example, I basically made a script for this guy who had some JSON files, which he wanted to control things like the sale price, the city, uh, how many bedrooms and such were in these house showing videos. So he sent over a template and I linked up a script to basically accommodate for it. Uh, it, it goes through and recognizes which layers are required to be changed, uh, whether or not uh, it needs to change maybe this text that says a million point five dollars or if it needs to change the phone number or the website, it finds these specific layers inside of the script, and then it goes through into a JSON file, reads those, and then it sort of changes them and does a bunch of other fancy stuff to eventually render it out. So as an example with this script, as it is a lot more complicated, it does require a folder structure for these various things that it's going to be doing. It needs the assets for the actual template file itself that it's going to be loading up, it's going to add custom icons depending on what kind of project you have. It has images of the house that need to be inserted. And of course it has a JSON file which contains all of the meat of this project. Uh, basically everything that was needed to be modified inside of this After Effects template that was sent, uh, we made into a template uh, using this JSON format. This is kind of not very good JSON convention and syntax, but it worked at the time and I just did it this way. But essentially it has all the text information needed as well as any file locations relative to the JSON file. Uh, that way it, if it needs to fetch any assets or anything it can go in and do all that. So just based on that JSON information I can run this script and it will ask me do I want to render the video? I'll say yes. So what it's going to do is, is opening up the template project, injecting all of those images and data, reading the JSON file, updating text, doing lots of color changes, all sorts of modifications, and in the end, once it's done generating this final render comp, which has a nice final output, um, you can see there's a, there's a few noticeable problems in this t particular case, but uh, it's looking really good, and then it goes on to load media encoder and render it out. Now lastly, let's look at a complicated, longer term working on script. Um, this is a very broad range. This could be a script that is a thousand lines of code but is incredibly complicated and dense with information and, and things like that. Or it could be an extremely uh, white spaced out code with 10,000 lines. This particular script is about 3,500 lines of code. And it's a custom script I developed for Production Crate, who I work with quite often to make awesome scripts to help artists improve their workflows and make cool designs and custom effects. Essentially, this is a giant suite of things all in one script. It allows you to create a shape or a solid layer of any of these shapes that are built into the script. Lots of two-dimensional options, 
and even three-dimensional objects, which will generate 3D shapes based on two-dimensional planes inside of your composition. And then there's uh, even more settings to customize, like what color you want it to be. You can change the width and the height, as well as the defaults, so that you can quickly launch the program again and just quickly do the same thing over and over. And then on top of that, it has an incredibly useful anchor point utility, which has a button that will select any generated shapes from the script, and then you can easily then, uh, with any of the layers you have selected, change their anchor point to be any of these positions. And then lastly, the last cool thing that uh, I implemented into the script is the ability to have this super powerful random feature where, where basically you can have randomization for the position, rotation, opacity, scale, time in and out, tint, and 3D. Now, not only that, you can have it randomized based on just default values, anywhere from you know zero to the width of the comp for position or opacity between zero and 100, or you can specify a limit to really get precise and randomize things like crazy. And then it also has the ability to add keyframes, and the feature list is just very large, and this script took a very long time, probably about at least six months to make. Um, but essentially, it's just very cool, and it allows you to make a lot of cool stuff very quickly. And the script just makes everything really useful. So say I generate like 11 star layers, and then I spread them out in the position just a little bit. I can then just really start messing around with things and do things like change the color um, and just completely randomize everything. So again, the script is, in, I'd say, on the very high end of complexity. Um, anytime you have anything you need to go in and change, you better hope you have it really well organized so that you can get everything uh, changed and fixed efficiently. So there's a lot of functions and a lot of code in here. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed. That's three practical scripting examples from basic to advanced complexity that I've worked on in my life, as well as just kind of the general overview of what is possible and what people are looking for uh, with scripts. If you're not following us on Instagram already, make sure you do that down below where I post updates for all the videos coming out and cool behind the scenes stuff. Leave a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe to be notified of when new videos are coming out. And of course, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.